Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is when you hear this message, I pray that you're poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. Hashem. So yesterday, yesterday I shared a, a nice brief lesson on three spiritual blocks. And if you haven't seen that video, I invite you to check it out. And you're going to notice that these three blocks are not spiritual at all. They're very mundane, but they are absolutely blocking and obstructing the majority of the people's ability to enjoy progress, fulfillment, and gratification in their spiritual practice. One is focus. If you lack focus, your thought's not going to work for you. Second is critical thinking. If you can't practice critical thinking rel rel religiously, your thought's not going to work for you. The third is just diligence. It's just work. It's consistency. If you can't work, if I's not going to work for you. Okay? You can divine all you want. You can make sacrifice all you want. You can take a course till the cows come home. I'm going to tell you, if you can't exercise those three habits, if I's not going to take you to the moon. Right? Uh, like my first uh, teacher would say, Baba Lade would tell me, uh, yeah, well, bye, Femi. that and a plane ticket to get you to Paris. <laughs> he would tell me that when I would be real creative and um, he was bringing me back to earth and that's what I want to do for you super helpful for me super duper helpful and with that in mind I want to give you a little insight into why I'm saying to you what I'm saying Baba Lade was my very first mentor I say my, my mentor because Baba Lade didn't teach me verses Baba Lade, I don't think Baba Lade even showed me how to throw obi but Baba Lade was like, was like that cool uncle, right? Imagine, you know, this wasn't my scenario, but just so you understand the context and the impact of Baba Lade on my life. Imagine, you know, your father's an accountant or your, your, your father is, uh, you know, just a regular guy. You ask him what color it's going to be and, and it's going to be gray. It's going to be tan. It's going to be black, right? His jacket is going to be gray. It's going to be tan. It's going to be black. That's it. Right. There's there's he's consistent. He's a good guy, but he's like bland. And then you got this uncle who comes in and, and you say, and uncle. What color is that jacket you got? He's like, oh, this is this is salmon, salmon. Yeah, this is salmon. You know, he's going he's he's talking about eating, you know, current paste and and, and listening to. I don't know, T Turkish, you know, folk songs or something, right? You know what I'm saying? He's just a guy who's like very, very innovative and creative. He's a splash of color and, and, and spice that you didn't grow up with, but it resonates with your spirit. And boom, as soon as you come in contact with this uncle, you're like, oh, finally, finally, this is somebody who I can relate to. And he's my people. That that was my experience with Baba Lade. All right. And it was so helpful for me because up to that point, I was an outsider everywhere I went, right? Because I am a person who is above average creativity, right? I'm above average innovator. I'm, I'm, I, and it, it, I don't say this as a, like, hmm, I, I'm saying this in the sense that I think we all are born with this based on my experience as an educator and a counselor working with people for 30 years now. I see the children. I see three year olds, right? I work with, with in preschool for a number of years and they're all magnificently creative. But life conditions all that creativity out of you or it tries to anyway. Um, we live in an economy that demands cookie cutter reality and cookie cutter behaviors, right? And so you got educated just enough to do your job, but not enough to ask pertinent, penetrating questions about the work that you do, who you work for, and, you know, your purpose in life. That your conditioning, by and large, does not encourage that. As a matter of fact, in your present work right now, 
I'm about 100% sure that it does not demand or even create opportunities for you to fully express yourself, to bring all of your creativity and your innovativeness to bear on your job. They don't want that. They don't welcome that. They don't need that. They need you to come sit at your desk and execute these tasks. That's it. Anything outside of that really is, is a nuisance. Okay. So in my own case, for a variety of reasons, I have been able to escape a lot of that conditioning and I've retained a high level of autonomy, freedom, independence, creativity, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I'm going to say to you right now is based upon my experience and it is, it is drawing from the lesson that we uh, received from the Orisha this morning. So today belongs to Shonko and Oya, uh, Kabiesi. And part of the lesson that, that we got uh, in today's uh, devotion really was speaking to the way in which you manage highly creative, highly productive people. All right. When you got somebody who's super creative and super innovative, you got to recognize the things that need to be in place. That super creative people need clearly defined objectives. This is what we're doing. Okay? This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. So, for example, this is something that I learned when I taught art. Okay? I've taught art over over many years, but um, my most recent art job um, affirmed for me the almost limitless creativity of young people. And when you want to guide that creativity and not stifle it, first thing you do is you got to show the, 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 the child, hey, this is what we're creating. Look, this is it, right? I got an example. Check it out. See how it is. Look at the shape. Look at the tone. And you point out the details of what we're creating. You know, hey, look at how this is black, but I'm going to show you something else like this is black, too. But see how this is black and how this is black, but they're not the same black. Now, this one is glossy and this one is matte. OK, that's what we're going to create. We're not going to create something that's shiny like this. We're going to create something that's a little, little bit dull. You know, you see that? And they're going to say, oh, yeah, I do see that. You see how this has got a is, is red on the inside. Look at that. Right. And all these things I'm going to show you in advance. This is what we're doing today. OK, because I know if I just throw some clay in front of you, I got 14 little children, nine years old, and I just throw a clay in front of them. Anything could happen. So before we get started, I need to show you this is what we're going to create. OK, and these are the details more or less of what we're doing. That carries out throughout when you got creative adults. In a workplace, in a, in, you know, uh, in a creative space, you need to be able to identify for people, especially when they're creative. This is what we're doing. All right. And that could be sound. Hey, this is the song that we're singing. Listen. Do you hear this? Do you hear this? Listen to the drums. Listen to the percussion. Listen for the, the different voices. Listen for the different instruments. This is what we're going to create. All right. So number one, you got to show them what we're doing. Number two, you've got to be able to create certain parameters that say this is what we do and this is what we don't do in this creative process. We're not going to do this. We're not going to we're not going to throw clay. We're not going to throw the clay on the ground. We're not going to take anybody else's clay. We're not going to. These are the things that we're not going to do. We are going to start with this and we're going to put it here. and We're going to put it there. OK. Very important for a creative person to know these are the parameters. These are the do's and the don'ts. And then the third thing that's really necessary is to demonstrate constancy. Constancy meaning you are impartial about 
reinforcement, positive and negative. When things are the way they are supposed to be, you say, that's what I'm looking for. When things are not the way they're supposed to be, you say, no, that's not what I'm looking for. And no matter who it is, and no matter what the circumstances are, you are telling people and revealing to people what's on track and what's off track, what's on track and what's off track. And the things that are off track, you deal with them accordingly. The things that are on track, you deal with them accordingly. For, for people who are very creative, that's important. That's important. It, it gives them the reassurance that they need that this is a safe space and it is what you say it's going to be. All right. Now, this is what I know as someone who has lived a life of creativity and also fostered and supported and encouraged and enabled other people to be equally, if not more creative than I. This is what I know. OK. And what I'm going to tell you is. The best thing for you to do, if you consider yourself a highly creative and highly productive person is, number one, you need to recognize your need for structure and order in your life and you need to impose it on yourself to the greatest of your ability. Stop waiting. You need to control yourself. You need to go back to my video that I was talking about yesterday. You need to control yourself. You need to put order in your life. In your life, you need to impose structure and order and consistency into your own life and and self-regulate. Number one. Number two. You need to once you've done that, you're going to appreciate this next part. You need to find somebody or somewhere that is going to encourage and support and demand that you do that at a higher level. That's why I love Baba Lade so much. It's the perfect first teacher for me. Right? You got to couple yourself with somebody or some organization or both that's going to recognize your ability and your talent and they're going to put you to task. They're going to show you. They're going to demand that you keep pace with the greats. Okay? That's what's going to take your creativity to the next level. You see, some people are comfortable with being just good creators. Eh, I create when I feel like it. Eh, I create when I'm in the mood. Eh, I create if the stage is exactly the way it... But when you get to the level of being a professional creator, create it will. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter who's there. It doesn't matter who's not there. It doesn't matter if they're being mean to me or they're being super nice to me. It doesn't matter. This is my habit. This is my code of conduct. I am going to produce right? When you got that, then nothing can stop you. All right. And so this is a lesson that I want to share with the leaders. This is something that's so important. If you're someone who has survived the conditioning, if the, if the, the, the overwhelming urge and compulsion for you to just conform and fall in line and, and, and become ordinary. If it hasn't touched you, if it hasn't diminished your ability, if it hasn't discouraged you from being a creative being and you want to put yourself to work in favor of something that is going to create a positive influence in your life and the lives that you are destined to serve and the lives of the people who matter most, then I want you to find out how Oloye Obafemi Origunwa and the Orisha Lifestyle Academy can help you take your practice and your life to the highest level possible. Visit me at obafemio.com or orishalifestyle.com and let's start working together to help you live the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. I look forward to working with you. Bye for now. Odabo.